<laughs> Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here and today's topic is a really hot button topic that rolled around and round on my mind ever since I was asked this on my live advice hour. So if you haven't been to the live advice hour, make sure you come over to my website tanyatko.com forward slash live. Every Wednesdays we have the a live show where people call in and ask for advice live on the air and I help out in the ways that, that I best know how to. So there was a young lady who called in and she asked, how do I make my man commit? And so this, you know, this topic is a really, really good one. And I felt that it deserved more expounding upon. So I'm going to drop the intro. Make sure you get your pen and paper because I'm going to give you the four ways. <laughs> Actually, let's simpl simplify it down to one. I'm going to give you one, the number one way to make a man commit. And then I'm going to give you six bonuses that support the topic. So get your pens and papers ready, boys and girls. And we're going to get right into it after the intro. <laughs> okay. How do we make a man commit? You see, I think part of the problem is a societal one where women are of the impression that it is their job and their duty to quote unquote make a man commit. And this, you know, this problem shows itself up in so many different ways. I'd like to ask you, how long have you felt that it was your responsibility to make a man do anything? to have the responsibility of the relationship and where the relationship goes on your shoulders alone. I'm sure many of you have heard the saying, she can't keep no man, why you can't keep no man. There's a huge outpour that sums up a woman's success by how well she can keep a man, how, by how long she's been in one relationship, and by what, what, what it is that she can get that man to do. And so, I, and you know what, and, 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 and this is what we're going to be addressing directly in this video, because I think that this is a problem that is system-wide, and a lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of the quote-unquote relationship coaches and relationship gurus and experts who come out giving information to women, give information to women from the standpoint of what it is that the woman is doing wrong and the hoops and turns that she needs to jump through in that relationship in order to get this man to do what it is that she wants him to do. And for a lot of women, we find our security in in getting commitment because it behooves us to be in a committed long-term monogamous relationship for childbearing reasons, etc. But I'm going to show you in the list that I'm about to write out how the number one way, you know what, before I give it away, let me just, let, let me just get the board out right now. How do we get a man to commit? Topic of the day. All right, let's first talk about what it is that that man represents in your household. Number one, we're talking about the man. This man is going to come in as king of the castle. This man is going to come in as head, head of the household. And he's also going to come in as man of the house. Okay. So this is the question that we're asking right now. How do you get, how do you get the person who is supposed to be king of the castle, head of the household, and man of the house, how do you get this person to commit? And this is what I want you to concentrate really, really heartily on. Okay. Think about what it is that you're asking. You're asking, how do you get the person who's supposed to come in and be provider, protector, and, and, and nurturer, and the person who, 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 and the person who comes in and holds the family together as head of that family, how do you get that person to commit to wanting you to be queen of the house, mother of his children? Think about that question, really. You know, 
Oh, I, you know, I didn't want to do this video because the topic is so heavy and it's fundamentally rooted in a lot of societal problems that we have nationwide, worldwide, with the onus and the responsibility of getting men to do what it is that we want them to do is on our shoulders. What if I flip that question and I said, how do you get a woman to commit? You know, and it's like the answer is either she wants to or she doesn't want to, or you have to participate in a certain amount of activities to make this woman think a certain thing or get her to be, listen, and it's, and, and, and it's different for men than it is for women because when women come into the household, the woman, the woman, when a woman comes into a relationship, that woman comes underneath the wing of that man who who acts as provider and protector and, and head of that family. She takes his last name. She, um, she... And even if your relationship rests on very close to 50-50, you're gonna have a much easier time in this partnership if you allow your man to be leader. Yes, ladies, if you allow your man to be leader, you will be able to get so much more fulfillment out of that relationship than you having to be the one trying to lead him and the family, et cetera, et cetera. Let's get into the points right now. This is what I want you to see and understand. Okay, can you see my board? Can you see that? Okay, great. All right, so, so you should ask yourself as a woman, Okay, if I want a man to come in and be king of the castle, head of the household, and man of the house, do you mean to tell me that this is a man that's not going to know whether or not this is the house that he wants to lead so much so that I have to manipulate him or contort myself into getting him to want to know that he wants to lead this household? See, oh, God have mercy. Let's talk about it. Let me get my eraser. You know what, before I go into the rest of that, let's talk for a moment. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk heart to heart. Let's talk. Let's talk. Okay. You as a woman will never be able to get what it is that you need and yearn for as a woman in this relationship if that man does not rise to the position of wanting to be head of that household. If you had to engage in trickery or manipulation or contortion of any kind to get this man to want to be with you, that's always going to weigh in on a part of you and you're always going to wonder how committed this man is to your household. This is why, you know, these ploys and tactics, have even having a person's baby won't make him commit to you he'll commit to that child if he's a good man but that doesn't mean that he'll commit to you as a woman and do the things that you as a woman yearn for and need him to do for him to show up in such a way that he's able to be the glue that holds that household together for him to be your support system for him to be your rock and your foundation somebody that you can lean on not only that what about the romantic aspect of the relationship. If you have to trick a man into being with you or trick a man into staying with you or trick a man into committing to you, is that going to be the man that's motivated to get you those flowers just because? To worry about the anniversaries or your birthdays or all those really nice, juicy, wonderful things that you want him as a man to rise to do so that you can rest in your feminine divine and be recipient of that wonderful, rich, pungent love that a man gives. You know, the longer that you in society thinks that there's something that you as a woman has to do to contort yourself to get this man to, to want to marry you or commit to you, the further and further you separate yourself from your own divinity. You are a goddess. And your position is one to rest into your feminine divine and allow that man to step up and be the man that he is supposed 
supposed to be in order to come in and, and, and be able to hold you, nurture you, and be the glue and foundation and the, and the, and the leader of that household and protectorate of that relationship. You know, you know what? The thing is that I know, God, I know what it's like when a man loves you truly and deeply loves you and would give his life for you. I know what that feels like. And I also know what it feels like to attempt to be with a man who is hard to get or unavailable and that, that, that hole, that emptiness that it creates inside because you just can't get that man to mesh into the puzzle piece that you need him to. And I'm going to tell you that as woman, your role is as recipient. If you look at the, even the general anatomy of our bodies, your role is as recipient. So it's not your job as a woman to get this man to commit. Your job as a woman is to choose the right man. Choose. Because you know what, what you do, right, as queen, you sit upon your throne and you allow the men to come to you. You are the gatekeeper to all of civilization that is ever to come and ever will be. You hold the key, honey, right here, right here. Look, look, look. I want you to see right here. Right here is the key. It's the, it's the birthplace of all future civilizations. So you as queen, your job is to sit back and let the suitors come to you and present what it is that they're going to present and you choose. It took me a long time as a woman to understand what this meant. And I'm going to let you know, because you know what, listen, the days of pillage and plunder where the men come in and squirt their seed by rape, is, is, are, those are days of the past. Insemination through rape only happened a small percentage of the time. Women have been and will always continue to be the gatekeepers of all life. So if a man wants access to being able to further his seed, he has to come through you. If a man wants access to furthering his family tree, he has to come through you. If a man wants access to being able to have a family, he has to come through you. You are not in a position of disempowerment and the longer that you think that you are, the longer you separate yourself from your divinity and the full understanding and knowing of who it is that you are as queen. Honey, you're the gatekeeper through life. You are the one, you're the portal through which all life comes into this world. When the soul meets up with the body, it meets up as it comes out of your womb. Honey, you have to understand who you are. How do you get a man to commit? Honey, you sit back and you choose a man who is worthy, who is worthy of committing to you. And you see, we, we disempower ourselves by giving up our choice. And I'm going to give you the six keys inside this video right here and now. So I want you to go grab your pen because it's about to get deep. Here we go. Okay, so how do you choose? How do you know who is worthy? Number six, we're gonna go down backwards in order. If you want to choose the right man to commit to you, you need to first look for a man who is committed to being the best man that he can be. You need to find a man who has a clear spiritual path, a man who knows what direction he's going in, and a man who is dedicated to his own upliftment. Because how can he come into the household and be able to hold you? and guide you as a woman and be able to lead that household if this is not a man who has demonstrated that he has a commitment to leading himself. If he has not invested the time in himself to becoming the best man that he can be, how is he going to come in and be the best man for your house? If he hasn't demonstrated the ability to be able to take care of his own house and home, how will he come in and be able to do that for you? So number six on the list, you need to make sure that he is committed to, committed to being the best human being that he 
that he needs to be or that he wants to be. I'm talking about by doing, by, by, by learning himself, by becoming self-aware, by doing the work on himself to fix and strengthen some of his problems from the past, to be able to become the strong man that you need him to be. Is he committed to himself before he can become committed to you, your children, or anybody else? Is that man committed to himself? That's number six. Number five, direction, baby, direction. You need to look for a man with a clear direction where he's going in life and the plan on how he's going to get there. And the way that you find that out, you simply ask him. Ask him where does he see himself in five years and ask him if he knows how he's going to get there. Ask him how he feels about his current job, his current life situation. These are going to be red flags. If he starts talking about how he doesn't like his job, he doesn't like where he is in his life, and he doesn't have a clear path of where it is that he's going as a man, he's not ready. He's not ready. He cannot commit to you because he himself, it's like he can't be the captain of your ship, honey, when he doesn't know where his own boat is going. Baby, you need to find a man who has clear direction and ask questions, honey. That's what Queen does. She sits back and she asks questions. That's number five. Number four, trust. Honey, listen, as protectorant or, or, or future protectorant, as applicant for protectorant of you, your future offspring, the household, as leader and head of that house, you need to be able to trust, oh Lord, listen to me. You need to be able to trust this man with your life, with your life, honey. If this is a man who's abusive to you or who's not good to you or acts a little shady and you, you don't even know if you could trust his word, honey, he's not the right one. You need to, because as a woman, first of all, women are 33%, let's talk about it. Women are 33% smaller, 33% weaker. Even a man, even a man who is my size, look at me. Even a man who is my size, he's going to be 33% stronger than me. So you're going to be put into a position where you're going to create a household with a person who can kill you with his bare hands. You need to be able to trust him with your life. You need to be able to trust him to be able to make decisions that are going to be in the best interest of you, the family, your life, your future offspring. You need to trust him with your life. And if you have a man who exhibited, who if you have a man who exhibits characteristics of being abusive and you can't even trust him with your person, honey, you can't trust him with your life. He is not the right one for you. Not for you. Not for queen. No. That's number four. Number three, since we're talking about trust, let's talk about integrity. Can you even trust his word? Is he the type of man that does what he says and says what he does? Is he the type of man that means what he says and says what he means? Is he a man who is living in his integrity? Is this a man who, when he says something, you can set your clock to it? Is he a man who is fully risen to the mantle of manhood so that when he says something, oh honey, his word is bond? Is he? Is he? If he says he's going to be somewhere, if he says he's going to do something, if he says he's going to get something taken care of, because if he doesn't have integrity, how can you trust him? If you can't trust his word, how can you trust him with your life? That's number three. Number two, and we're getting to the good ones now. We're getting to the good ones here. Now, we're going to talk about, right now, we... we Right now we're getting to what it is that makes a man a man and what makes him more ready for commitment. Okay. We're gonna call this one outlet. Outlet. You know, 
Men are different than women in that men need a certain amount of autonomy. Reproductive success for a man biologically is for him to spread his seed far and wide. So the urges that a man has is going to be different than the urges that you have. And you need to find out if this man is done playing. Has he, does he have an outlet for his excitement? Is he done playing the field? Ask him. Is he done playing the field? Has he gotten all his oats out? Has he calmed down sexually? So you need to find out what outlets he has. And you know what, ladies? A big mistake that many of us make is that we try to stop our men from going out with the boys. Huge, 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 huge mistake. You want to be able to give him an outlet for his, his testosterone and his pent up. He can't be with you all the time. He can't be the man that you need him to be if he's not able to, to, to rise to his full level of masculinity and be able to let out that testosterone, let it, let it seep out. Like being with you is fine and dandy, but being around too much of softness is going to start to drain him. So you need him to be able to get out there and go play his laser tag or his paintball or his whitewater rafting, horseback riding, wild snake hunting, whatever it is that that man needs to do, his little doom buggy riding, whatever it is, let that man go out and play his golf let that man go out and he'll be able to be more of the man that you need him to be I mean if you really think about it how draining would it be for you to be around grunting football and concrete imagine if you know what because men are the ones who are responsible for building for the building of our societies the roads, the bricks, the buildings, all of that. How draining would it be for you if you had to chip away at rocks and lay down tar all day? How draining would that be without the chance of you to sit back, rest and relax in your feminine divinity, to be able to do the things that nurture you as a woman so that you could show up for him in the way that you need him to. It's just like stress. Like in a household where you have to stress and stress and stress over money, then all of a sudden, first thing you lose is your sex drive and your attraction to that man because you've been put in a position where you're not really able to rest into your gifts as a woman. So therefore, you don't really have much gifts to give him. So that's why you have to let him go out there so that he can come back and bring you the gifts that you as a woman needs. The same way you need to be free of all the stresses, the same way he needs to go out there and let off some of his stress stresses so let him go out there and do that and then number one number one is my favorite but I needed to add something right here underneath direction I got so excited I forgot to add this ladies this is very important very important money 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 honey listen when that man comes in, first, listen, I've interviewed a lot of different men. And for some, even as boys, I don't know, it's, it's hardwired into them. Just the same way it's hardwired into women, the, the, the feminine things that we like, it's hard, like how, we, like how it's hardwired into women to like men with money. It's hardwired into men, even from the time that they're little boys, that when they come into the household, they have to take care of house and home. Little boys want to take care of their mother. The little boys are always like, I'm going to be the little man in this house. I'm going to take care of mommy. And they start looking after mom from very early on. Someone tries to come near their mother, and, they, and, and, and they're like, what are you doing? Get away from my mother. You know? <laughs> and, and, and you know what? But the flip side is also true for girls, but in a different respect, where they don't want other, other people coming near their father because they don't want to take away from the attention that the father would be giving them. So they don't want, they're like, get away from my daddy because you want that attention that daddy shows showered on you, not because you feel that you need to protect daddy from these other women. That's the difference. And that's the, the fundamental biological difference between men and women. So when it comes to direction, you need to really find out if that man is where he wants to be financially because when we start talking about how do we get a man to commit you have to find a man who is commitment ready and the more the more stable he is the more he knows about his own direction the easier listen the lie that we've been told is that men don't want to commit we'll talk about that a little bit later as soon as I finish number one okay Number one is my favorite. 
heart. Ladies, we are the most intuitive. I'm going to put the list away. Oh, ladies, ladies, ladies. We are the most intuitive half of society. We have a capacity and a capability of really being able to, to tune in em empathetically, emotionally, psychically be able to tune in to other people. This is why they talk about the woman's sixth sense. And so you need to choose a man who you feel with your heart, with your whole heart. Choose a man who you feel in your being and in your spirit is, the, is, the, is, a, is a right aligned fit for you and the future family. Choose a man who you, would, who you would like sons to be like. Choose a man who you would like a father like. For example, and we're not saying that we want him to be a father figure to you, but if this is a man that you're talking about committing to you, is this the type of man whom you would like sons to be like? And if you were going to be this man's daughter, would you want a father? like him. If you were going to be his son, would you want a father like that man? So before you choose a person, let him wiggle across your subconscious. Let him wiggle across your spirit and see how he feels. Use your mind to project into the future to see what a relationship with him may look like. Use your, use your intuition, honey. And you know, one of the biggest lies that we've been told as women is that men don't want to commit. But when you find a man who has those things in place, you know, I did, I did a video on the five best times to catch a husband. Make sure you check out that video. But when you, when you, when you, when you choose a man who knows the direction that he's going in, is comfortable financially, has gotten, who, who has outlets for his testosterone and his male activities, a man who knows where he's going and knows where he wants to be, a man who is committed to his upliftment and his own divinity, or a man who rises to the full breadth of his integrity, then you, then you have a man who is ready, who is ready. If you find, listen, when there are pieces missing from that, when he doesn't have an outlet, when his money is funny and his change is strange, how can he commit to you? Most men, and the men who are not interested in taking care of house and home, those are not the men that you want anyway. But most men, most men, before they get into a committed relationship, they want to have themselves together because they know the responsibility that lay on them as king of the castle. So how do you get a man to commit? You have to choose the right man. There comes a time in a man's life where he gets all of those things under control and then he starts looking for queen. Trust me. He starts looking for his, for his better half. He starts looking for his, let me say, he starts looking for his other half. He starts looking for mother of his children. And you see, this is a big mistake that so many of us women make, is we go and we rent out our uteruses and we rent out our wounds to men who are lesser than. We should not be having children for bum men. You know, it's like, if you don't like something that's going on, Gosh, you know what? We don't really fully understand our power. What I would love for you to do is come over to my website, tanyatko.com, and download my free guide on self-love and trauma healing. Because you know what? So many of us women have been so disconnected from our feminine divine that we don't even understand the role that we play in society and how important our role is. Like I look, I look over in some of these countries, right? I look in some of these countries there, they stone women for being raped. The women can't drive and the women can't do this and the women are upset. And I'm like, Gatekeepers, close your womb. Don't bring forth any more of their seed. Don't let them in. Don't let them procreate until they give you what it is that you need. And society will cease. 
when women learn how important their womb is and not to let people rent out their womb to bring forth their future seed, society as we know it will cease, honey. Listen, sit back and rest in your divinity. Stop bringing forth their children. You see, because before when a man wanted to have access to birthing, he knew that he had to be in a committed relationship and he knew that he had to get himself together. Now, men don't have to get themselves together. They don't even have to be committed. They don't, they, they, you're letting bums run up in you. You want people who, who won't make good fathers run up in you. If you see a man and he doesn't seem like he, he's going to be a good father figure, you don't let him inside of you. Don't let him in you. If he doesn't have his money together, if, if, he's not, if he's not where he needs to be, if he's telling you, number one telltale sign, if he's telling you that he's not ready for a commitment, don't let him inside of you. Trust him. Men don't want you to change them. He doesn't need you to change them, and he does not want you to. This is a position that he has to rise to as a man. He doesn't, you can't do it for him. You can't, but as long as you're willing to pacify him with pum pum, he'll keep coming back. He has no motivation to really get himself together until he himself, I mean, listen, until he himself gets to the point where he wants better for himself. And if he doesn't want better for himself, let the gene pool die with him. Let it die with him, okay? Let it die with him. So trust him. When he says that he's not ready for a commitment, you have to trust that this man knows a lot more about his life than you do. Where he is and what it is that he's able to give, he knows a lot more about it than you do, so trust him. If this man is to be head of household, king of the castle, and man of the house, you're going to have to trust his word. You're gonna to have to trust him. And if he knows that he's not in a position to give and be what you need him to be, and if he knows that he can't be the man to you that you need him to be, trust him. Cause you know what, I, I, listen, I'm a woman and I understand that we think all we have to do is open up our petals and every man is going to love us. And that's not true. There, listen, everybody likes something different and men do have preferences for who it is that they join with. And if you're not his cup of tea, so to speak, if you're not somebody who he resonates with, if you're not the type of woman who helps him rise even further to the mantle of manhood and expound himself as a human being, if you're not the woman that he feels that he can get there with, trust him. If he says that he does not want to commit to you, trust him. There's really not much that you can do. I hope you learned something from this video. It came from the depths of my heart. Trust yourself as divine queen and goddess. Choose a good man. Let me get out of here. Hug me, hug me. I know we had a hard conversation today. Hug me. Oh, I love you all so very, very much. I love you so very much. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, go out there and love one another. But most importantly, love yourself. Please join me. You can get a, for a limited time, I'm offering free one-on-one -on -one healing strategy sessions where we'll talk one-on-one -on -one and really get to the, to, to the root of how to fix some of your issues because you know what there's a lot of programming that has gone on that has hypnotized us from when we were young separated us from source and divine our own divine power in our own place in this society so join me i um i i'm offering this for a limited time only come to my website download the the book read the book set up a strategy session with me and let's talk let's heal it's time it's time. How much longer are we going to go around with this same mentality? How much longer are we going to continue with these abusive thoughts of how we can't quote unquote keep no man when it's not up to us to, to have to keep him? Not every man was meant to be kept. Not every man is the man that you need him to be. So why hold on to something that's not working for you? You are queen. You are queen. 
So male and female, I, um, I do coaching sessions with men and women, and I love being able to help my people. So please come out, subscribe. If you want updates to my videos and my vlogs, make sure you subscribe to my mailing list. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So TanyaTKO.com, you can see all my links for all over social media on my website. And that's Tanya with an O. T-O-N-Y-A. And I'm out. Peace. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> Come to www.tanyatko.com and download your free copy of my guide entitled Truly Love Yourself and Heal Old Trauma and set up an appointment to have a free healing strategy session with me today. Remember, go out there and love one another but most importantly, love yourself.